So for those that don't know, YouTube actually has a bunch of free movies that you can watch right here on YouTube. And it's not just a few little B movies no one wants to see. They're awesome movies and there's a lot more of them now than I've ever seen. In this video, we're gonna talk about 20 of the absolute best movies you can currently catch for free right here on YouTube with links in the top pinned comment down below. Today's video is sponsored by Bespoke Post. We'll talk more about them though after we talk about the first couple of movies on this list. And my number 20 pick is a lesser known movie with some heavy hitters in it like Dustin Hoffman and John Travolta in Mad City. Now this is a hostage negotiation style movie and it's not the only one on this list. John Travolta plays a disgruntled security guard who goes back to his place of work after being fired with a bag full of guns. So it's very against type for John Travolta and then Dustin Hoffman actually plays a reporter who is able to sort of cozy up to this guy who has taken a bunch of kids hostage in a museum. Now as heavy as all of that sounds, and the movie does have heavy moments, it's actually pretty watchable and would appeal to a fairly broad audience. It is a little bit dated today and I'm not a big fan of John Travolta's performance in this movie. It's a little bit heavy handed as well. But overall, this is a pretty cool flick that ultimately sticks the landing. If you have been enjoying The Last of Us on HBO, then my next pick is gonna be right up your alley, The Girl with All the Gifts. Now this takes place in a dystopian future. The planet has been overrun by zombies. It's something you've seen a dozen times at least. However, there is a young girl in this story who is very special. This is actually based on a book by the same name and from what my wife tells me, it actually holds up to the book pretty well. The story itself actually has quite a bit of mystery in the beginning, questions that are answered fairly early on, but there's an interesting twist to this zombie story that's very different from anyone I've ever seen, and the girl with all the gifts delivers that pretty damn well. One of the only true blue comedies on this list is Dracula Dead and Loving It, a movie I've not seen available on any streaming service for quite a while. I happen to love this one. I'm a sucker for Leslie Nielsen and I love the Dracula story and this one just blends the two of those together perfectly. But it is an acquired taste. If you don't like the sillier Leslie Nielsen style of comedy, then this is probably not gonna be the one for you. No! But if you want some real monsters in a very realistic setting, I highly recommend checking out the indie flick, Monsters. This takes place again in a dystopian future, except instead of zombies, the planet has been overrun by gigantic monsters. But this is not anything like a Godzilla movie. This is a very small story about two people who are traveling through these forbidden zones. For a movie about giant monsters, Monsters has little to no action in it. This is almost sort of a road movie. They're not really driving around much at all, but it's a journey and a beautiful one at that, especially when done on such a low budget. If you like thinky indie movies, then Monsters is a fantastic one. Just again, don't expect a Godzilla movie. But before moving on with the remaining movies on this list of 20, I do wanna tell you about today's sponsor, Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's free to join and you can skip a month or cancel anytime. 90% of all the products come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. Every month they introduce their members to new products like outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and a lot more. And the selections they make for you is based on a preference quiz that you will fill out when you sign up. Every box of awesome has around $70 worth of goods inside, but will cost you a fraction of that value. This month, the filet kit came with these incredible kitchen knives. They've got a just beautiful, beautiful handle. I've got a collection of nice kitchen knives. This looks like the nicest one I own, and I haven't used it yet because I wanted to keep it for this ad, but man, I can't wait to start cutting up some meat with this thing. And they most recently sent me this stogie kit, which I have not even opened yet. Oh. And it came with this beautiful cigar sleeve, easily the nicest one of those I own. And that's a flask, y'all. Easily the coolest cigar cutter I've owned, as well as a cigar journal and some cedar spray to get rid of that pesky cigar smell that I know my wife hates. To get 20% off your first box of awesome, just go to the link in the description below and use my code, FlickConnection20, at checkout. 
you will get a box of awesome assigned to you. And before it ships, you get to preview it and do one of three things. You can keep it, you can swap it for another box or skip that month entirely. And I love the fact that you only have to pay for the stuff you want to keep. Again, go to the link in the description below, save 20% when you use my code FLICKCONNECTION20. It's a fantastic deal, but let's move on with the rest of the fantastic movies on YouTube right now. Next up is a personal favorite of mine. It mixes dragons with another post-apocalyptic future in Reign of Fire. Not only is it a dragon-laden post-apocalyptic movie, but it stars Christian Bale, Matthew McConaughey, and Gerard Butler all in the same movie, and they're all total badasses in this thing. Now, I will say this movie never quite got as cool as I wanted it to be for a movie about dragons. We don't get many grown-up movies about dragons. This one missed the mark a little bit, but still, it is a badass movie about dragons with an incredible cast. I love everybody in this movie, but Matthew McConaughey's character touches on something. He's doing something quite different than he normally does, and he's almost unrecognizable the first time you see him. I love what he did in this movie, and it's just a solid PG-13 action-adventure movie. It is a little neutered because of that PG-13 rating, but it still really does hold up better than you might expect. Now let's rewind the clock all the way back to 1987 for a Steven Spielberg produced sci-fi comedy, Inner Space. Now in this movie, Dennis Quaid plays an astronaut who is shrunken down and somehow gets injected into the thigh of Martin Short. Now if that setup isn't funny enough, and trust me it is, Martin Short really does kill it in this movie, the inner space sequences where this little submersible machine is floating around inside Martin Short's body all look absolutely incredible for today, much less 1987. Like I said, this was produced by Steven Spielberg and has some stunning visual effects that still hold up today. And the icing on the cake is it's quite funny with a fair amount of action in it for a sci-fi comedy. Now, if that's not enough action for you and you miss good, solid Bruce Willis action movies because he made a bunch of turds before he stopped making movies, I highly recommend checking out Hostage. Like I said, there was another hostage negotiation movie on this list, and in this movie, Bruce Willis plays a grizzled hostage negotiator. But in this one, there's a group of teenagers that have taken a very wealthy family hostage in a teched out house that has been locked down. Not only are these teenagers doing really fantastic performances, but one of them is Ben Foster, and his character arc in this movie is absolutely insane and leads to some of the best moments in the movie. This is a rated R movie. It's got a hard edge to it that actually works. In terms of Bruce Willis's filmography, this does fall somewhere in the middle, but the middle of Bruce Willis's filmography is a pretty solid place to be. My next pick also kind of falls into the middle of the filmography for both Jeff Bridges and Tommy Lee Jones, who star in Blown Away. In fact, I would put this a little above the middle of their filmographies, which is why it's ranked higher on this list. In this movie, Tommy Lee Jones plays a really excellent villain, something he's only done a handful of times before. He's actually an IRA bomber who escapes from prison and almost feels kind of like a Batman villain, like a better one than the Two-Face he did, like a Christopher Nolan type of Batman villain. Jeff Bridges is on the Boston Bomb Squad and begins to be targeted by this mad bomber. Not only is this a fantastic movie with some incredible sequences in it that really has a stunning look for a movie from 1994, it also has a killer soundtrack stacked with some great tracks, including some of U2's best music ever. It really is a fantastic movie that still holds up. If you like solid thrillers and you've never seen this, Jim, watch it before it leaves YouTube. Now my next pick has a remake on the way that actually looks really solid. The remake stars Jake Gyllenhaal as an MMA fighter, but the original stars Patrick Swayze as a bouncer in Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Based on everything I know about the remake, it sounds like it's gonna be a banger, but I will say that the original holds up. If you've never seen Roadhouse, there's a fair warning here that there are a lot of very cheesy elements in the movie, but they're cheesy because they've been spoofed, and not just directly spoofed, this vibe of an 80s movie has been spoofed to death, but 
Roadhouse is an original. It's a true gym and it feels incredibly authentic even when it goes into some wild directions. I actually really do love this movie and not in an ironic way. It's fun to watch. Like I said, even when it's silly, it still is really fun and the overall vibe is incredibly well glued together. If it's been a while since you've seen it and you think maybe it's not as good as you remember, this is one of those rare exceptions where something that seems silly really does hold up and is maybe even better today than you remember. I could say the same thing about my next pick, which is just an underrated gym from the 90s from a top tier director, Brian De Palma. It's just not one of his more well-known movies, Snake Eyes starring Nicolas Cage. Now I should correct myself there, this movie is fairly well known, but I bet a lot of people don't know that Brian De Palma directed this and don't know quite how well he directed it either. I mean the opening sequence helps sell the movie, it is a trademark sequence from Brian De Palma, it is a long one shot take, something that's done in movies all the time now. This was done back when everything was still on film, and not only that, the entire sequence is full of extras and actors. It's a wild way to introduce you not just to Nicolas Cage's character, which by the way, he is just doing top-notch Nicolas Cage in this movie, but it also introduces you to the setting, this packed arena on a fight night where a murder mystery breaks out. It is the classic, the lights go off, the butler's dead type of a story, except it's in this gigantic arena and Nicolas Cage's kind of crazy unhinged character is the detective for the most part. He's got to figure everything out. Gary Sinise has a great role. Carla Gugino's fantastic. And this is one of the types of movies I love recommending on this channel. It's a movie I know most of you are aware of. Most of you have probably even seen it and you just scroll past it when you see it on streaming. But I promise you, if you were to flick it on, you would be surprised how much you enjoy either watching it or re-watching it. And these titles will not be free on YouTube forever. In fact, they change them out every single month. So make sure you've clicked that subscribe button. That way you get notified when videos like this release so you don't miss the movies before they're gone. Now my next pick is an action comedy movie starring Jackie Chan. And no, it's not Rush Hour or any of the Rush Hours. It is the OG Jackie Chan action comedy, Drunken Master. This is from 1978. Jackie Chan has been whipping people's asses in movies for a really long time, and it is so fun to watch one of his earlier movies, Drunken Master being one of his most highly rated movies ever. In fact, they ended up making sequels to this, and while it's not my favorite in his filmography, it is one of the cooler movies to find. Now, I will say I wanted to rank this one a little bit lower, actually, which is not something I think I've ever said on this channel before, but the version on YouTube right now is dubbed, and it's not a good dub. This is 1978. This is when they sounded silly, so if you decide to watch it, I recommend either pursuing a DVD copy or somewhere where you can hear the original and read the subtitles, but watching it here on YouTube because it is an action comedy could make for a fun watch because it's got that silly 1978 dub. Now my number nine pick on this list comes from one of my all time favorite directors and it is his very first movie. I'm talking about Paul Thomas Anderson's Hard Eight. Now after this movie, the studio basically gave him the right to do whatever he wanted and he created Boogie Nights, easily one of his best movies to this day. However, Hard Eight holds up in an incredible way. If you are a fan of John C. Riley in any kind of way, even if you just like him in his Will Ferrell movies, you need to see this movie. He's obviously a fantastic actor, he's been doing some amazing roles for a long time, but he gets a ton of screen time in this movie, and it's a young John C. Riley. Samuel L. Jackson has a great role, even though he's not in it much, this is a fantastic early role for him. Gwyneth Paltrow plays sort of this crazed hooker cocktail waitress character, and she's fantastic in it. Philip Seymour Hoffman has a great little cameo, but Philip Baker Hall is really the lead here. A lot of you probably know him as Mr. Bookman from Seinfeld. What about that kid sitting down, opening a book right now in a branch of the local library and finding drawings of peepees and wee-wees? He murders it in this movie. He is so fantastic in this. And it's not just a dry drama. I mean, it is that, but it's Paul Thomas Anderson. So every scene has some interesting elements in it. And it's not little artsy elements about where he put the camera. I mean, the first scene, Philip Baker Hall is teaching John C. Riley's character how to get free nights at casinos. And it's incredibly fun to watch. 
This movie does go into some dark directions, but it's all in the hands of Paul Thomas Anderson. And if you're a fan of any of his movies, then you need to see his early work in Hard Eight. My number eight pick is one I've not seen available on streaming services almost anywhere until recently. I found it on Tubi, recommended it on a recent Tubi list, but In the Mouth of Madness is also included for free on YouTube right now. This is directed by John Carpenter and is easily one of his most underrated movies. Without giving too much away, the basic plot here is that there's this Sutter Kane writer who's very much like Stephen King, they even share the same initials, and things in his books appear to be coming to life in our reality. Sam Neill plays a man who's going to find Sutter Kane and figure out what's going on, and this movie literally just descends into madness. There's weird, creepy body horror stuff. I mean, if you told me this movie was directed by David Cronenberg, I would believe you. It is a John Carpenter flick and has some incredible elements, like creature designs from Stan Winston. Incredibly mind-bending story elements. I mean, this is a freak out of a movie that I love watching every few years. In fact, it makes a killer Halloween watch, especially if you've never seen it. If you like dark, twisted stuff, Movies like Event Horizon, also with Sam Neill, and you've never seen In the Mouth of Madness, watch it as soon as you finish watching my video. I recently went and saw Cocaine Bear in the theater, and while I did think it was really funny and I had a great time watching it, another intense movie about a bear is free to watch on YouTube and might be one of the best bear movies I've ever seen, The Edge. Now this stars Anthony Hopkins, one of the greatest actors to have ever lived, and Alec Baldwin. He plays a real piece of shit in this movie, which makes it a little easier, but the two of them get lost out in the wilderness in Alaska and begin to be hunted by a vicious grizzly bear. And not just a vicious one, a gigantic grizzly bear. The scenes with the bear are all fantastic and really nail-biting, almost to the point of being a horror movie, but you also get loads of fantastic survival elements and ultimately a really great story that again sticks that landing. Now you may be familiar with film noir, it's old school detective movies gumshoe type stuff, but neo noir is another genre of newer type detective movies and then neon noir is even more focused than that. Think movies like Drive with Ryan Gosling, but my next pick is the entire catalyst for this very niche genre, Michael Mann's Thief. This stars James Caan as a street thief, a professional safe cracker, whatever you want to call him. But the way that this is done and the way Michael Mann does all of his crime movies is it feels incredibly real. It's not this hokey thing written by screenwriters that are imagining what crime might actually be like. Michael Mann's crime movies are among some of the most researched ever made, and Thief is an incredible example. It's not big and epic with tons of different characters like Heat. It's very focused on James Caan's character, but there's incredible cinematography, a fantastic score done by Tangerine Dream, and this movie has been remastered and just looks glossy and beautiful in every single shot. I mean, released in 1981, the 80s are just getting started, yet Thief just oozes this 80s sensibility and feels like it is so far removed from the 70s. It really is a cool flick. If you've never seen it and you typically like my crime recommendations here on the channel, this is one of my all-time favorites. Anthony Hopkins makes the list again with what is easily one of his most underrated movies, and the man has a killer filmography, but here I'm talking about the world's fastest Indian. Sorry, longtime subscribers, I know I recommend this movie a lot, but it really is a true gem that just too few people seem to know about. This is the true story of Burt Monroe, a real man from New Zealand who was going for the land speed record on his modified Indian motorcycle. This too is basically a road movie. He decides he wants to go out to the salt flats in America and prove himself with this land speed record. And you don't need to care anything about that setup to thoroughly enjoy this movie. What makes this movie so fantastic is Anthony Hopkins' performance of this Burt Monroe character, sort of this crazy, unhinged kind of a character who has a warm heart and just loves everybody. 
They actually make a point in the movie to show that no one's quite sure about him. Everyone's kind of thinks he's a little bit weird, but all of them come around to absolutely love this guy, and you will too, in every single scene. It really is kind of cool that Anthony Hopkins can do this the way that he does. I'm not sure anyone else would have been nearly as perfect for this movie as him. If that sounds the least bit interesting to you, I promise you, this is a feel-good movie that does not feel cheesy in the slightest. All right, now we're in my top four. We're getting to some real heavy hitters. My next pick being one of the coolest sci-fi movies ever released, Planet of the Apes. You wanna talk about movies that still hold up. This was released in 1968, and the first 30 minutes or so of the movie are really what make this thing work. You get a slow introduction into the story, into the planet, into the characters, before essentially the twist comes in where you see apes riding around on horses. Now, that's not that much of a twist. I'm sure they gave it away in the trailers originally when it was released, but it is the moment where everything changes and the movie is quite patient before it gets there, something movies would not do today. This is just a top-notch production with some iconic scenes in it that are well worth watching and re-watching, but it also makes some incredible points along the way that are not outdated today. It really is a fantastic movie, even when you know the twist that comes at the very end. One of the most iconic twists in movie history, it still hits you the right way and doesn't feel forced or spoofed or anything. I'm telling you, if it's been a while since you've seen Planet of the Apes or you've never seen it, make it a retro movie night you won't soon forget. Now, I just recently saw Guy Ritchie's newest movie, Operation Fortune, in the theaters and thought it was just a fun spy movie. It's far from my favorite of his, but it was a fun trip to the theaters. I highly recommend checking it out when it's maybe available to watch at home. But one of my favorite movies of his is available for free, Snatch. Anything to declare? Yeah. Don't go to England. Now this is just his second major feature film and certainly one of his biggest or most famous. I very recently recommended Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, which is available on Prime Video right now. But Snatch is just one of those gems that doesn't get old no matter how many times you've seen it. And not just because of Brad Pitt's crazy role. I mean, that is fun. I love watching Mickey in these movies, but every single character, and there are tons of them, they're all so rich, so well-developed, and so fun to watch going at each other chasing after this diamond. The movie is so good, you don't even really care what they're trying to do or why. You just want to see the banter between all of these wild characters. Killer soundtrack, one of the best on this entire list, and one of my favorite endings in a movie ever. I love everything about this movie. This is a true blue Darren Van Dam pick. I know most of you have seen it, but for those that haven't, God bless you, it's time to watch it now. And then my number two pick on this list is easily one of my favorite movies of all time. It's the first in one of my favorite franchises of all time, Mad Max. Now, believe it or not, I don't actually love the original as much as some of the sequels. I know some people will think that's blasphemy, but I do feel like the original gets a little bit slow and doesn't have the world building that gets developed in some of the later entries, but it is still a killer movie with some fantastic car chases in it that are just bone crushingly real. And I do think that's what a lot of people like about this one versus some of the others. It doesn't feel quite so fantastical. It feels not very far removed from our reality. It seems like something that could happen. And it's got a cool vibe. It came out in 1979, so it's straddling the line between the 80s and the 70s, and the movie is in both worlds at the same time in this really fantastic way. I mean, this movie launched Mel Gibson's career, and they're still making Mad Max movies today. And not just they, George Miller, the original creator of this movie, is still making them. They're currently finishing up the new one, and I personally can't wait to see it. And then, Paul Thomas Anderson makes the list again with my all-time favorite movie of his, and a movie that's easily in my top 10 movies of all time, There Will Be Blood. Train it! Train it, Eli, you boy. Now, I understand some people don't like this movie. It can be pretty hard to follow, and not just the story. There's actually not that much story to follow, but it can be hard to stay with it 
because it's fairly slow paced. You do have to get into Daniel Day-Lewis's performance from the jump to really get into this movie. And his is killer. This is one of my all-time favorites of his, probably second to Bill the Butcher. Paul Dano held his own with Daniel Day-Lewis in this movie, and I think people didn't really appreciate that enough for what it was. That had to be a hell of a feat for such a young man especially, but he did it, and all of those scenes work as a result. What's so great about this movie is I think everybody has sort of their different favorite scenes. I mean, the movie itself is almost three hours, so if it's been a while since you've seen it, I guarantee you've forgotten about great little scenes like this one. You look like a fool, don't you, Tilford? <sighs> yes. yes. The movie is packed with them. The cinematography is incredible. It is just a cinematic journey that I love to take every few years or so. One of my all-time favorites. Again, the full list of all the movies discussed with links is in the top pinned comment below. Thanks again to Bespoke Post for sponsoring another video. Go check out their link and get their discount down in the description. But I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for watching this special YouTube episode, and you will see me on the next one.